On today's episode of In the Kitchen, I've transported myself to the lavender fields of France thanks to Emily Sperlin's traditional Italian panna cotta dessert. You can make it taste however you want, and I decided to give mine a French spin. All right, so we are going to get started on our panna cotta. We're gonna use a saucepan, and we're gonna get the heat up to about medium, medium high. We're gonna add two cups of heavy cream, and you wanna heat up the cream until it's steaming, but not yet simmering. It's gonna take anywhere from two to three minutes. It's time for the choose your own adventure of this panna cotta. You wanna turn the heat off. While this dessert is typically Italian, I feel like going to France. So I'm gonna add a bunch of mint. I'm also going to add some tarragon. It's gonna add some like anise or black licorice flavor. And then we're gonna add some lavender. Purple rain, yeah, prince. And we're just gonna let this all steep in the cream for about 20 minutes until it hits your desired flavor. You can also add other flavors like chamomile, you could add lemon, rose geranium, and this is where you can kind of make this panna cotta your own. So now we're gonna let this steep for about 20 minutes and you can taste the cream after about 20 minutes and see if that's the intensity of flavor that you want from the herbs and flowers that you've added. My kitchen smells what I imagine Julia Child's entire life smelled like, so I think we're good to go and we're just going to strain out all of the herbage. This is where all the flavor is going to come from in the panna cotta, so you want to make sure that you do not skimp out on getting all of your cream as we can. Now it's time to bloom our gelatin. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds awesome. To do so, we need to add a half a cup of whole milk. Make sure you're using whole milk. The fat content is important. And we're going to use one packet of unflavored gelatin. Again, make sure it's unflavored because we just made that delicious cream. So we're going to add our gelatin, just sprinkle it on top of your milk. And we're just going to let this sit for about five minutes until the crystals just start to dissolve. Looks like skin. Okay, our gelatin is bloomed and we're going to add this to our pot. Whisk is probably not the best tool to use right now but we're gonna use it in a little bit. Well, this'll do. We're gonna let the milk get warm on your stove top. Do not let it come to a simmer. Warm up until all of the gelatin has dissolved. All right, the gelatin has dissolved into the warm milk, and now we're going to add a quarter cup of honey. I'm gonna eyeball this because I, once again, despise measuring honey. I'm gonna turn the heat off also. So this is gonna add a bunch of sweetness because we haven't added any sugar or anything sweet to this dessert yet. There we go. And we're gonna add our infused delicious cream. Back to France with the lavender and the mint and the tarragon. We're just gonna whisk this all until it combines. Told you we were gonna use the whisk. Just make sure that the honey and the salt and your cream combine with the milk and the gelatin. I cannot wait to see what this gelatin does. Liquid mess will soon become panna cotta. The entire time we've been making this, there's been a song running through my head, panna cotta de vie. Everything's incorporated, so now you just want this mixture to come to room temperature. Our mixture has come to room temperature, and now we're gonna add our last ingredient, a half of a cup of buttermilk. We're gonna wanna whisk this in. This is gonna add a really nice tang, and now it's time to pour our mixture into some ramekins. If you don't have ramekins, you can use any like really pretty little bowl that you might have. Just make sure that they are small in size. You don't wanna go make like a punch bowl of panna cotta. So we're gonna carefully pour our mixture into a ramekin. Now we have our four little beauties and our little ramekins, and we're going to cover them in plastic wrap and put them in the fridge for anywhere to four or five hours until the gelatin sets. And we've got a delicious dessert, which I cannot wait to eat. So it's been four to five hours. Our panna cottas have set up, so they're super firm. It's time to decorate our panna cotta. And this is where you can kind of let whoever you're giving these to know what types of ingredients you infused your cream with. I'm gonna add a little honey on top for some sweetness. And then I'm gonna add a few beautiful mint leaves. I'm gonna finish with some sprigs of lavender. It's like a little corsage for my panna cotta. Panna cotta, will you go to prom with me? And there we go, we have our very traditional Italian panna cotta dessert but with a French twist, and it's time to eat. I went and got myself a gold spoon because this dessert, I feel like, deserves it. I'm also picturing myself in a field with the bees buzzing, and the sun is hitting me, and there's lavender everywhere. I just cannot wait to taste this. Mm. This is so creamy, ridiculously packed with flavor. This thing is loaded with lavender, mint, and tarragon, and the sweetness from the honey. I've essentially captured the French countryside in a dish, and I just wanna go enjoy this by myself. So I'll see you guys next time. Au revoir!